Who do you desire to impress in this life? Because you'll have to impress somebody. And who you impress will determine what you become as a person, like whether your soul is dark or is in light, whether your soul is in hatred or in love, whether your soul is in doubt or faith, whether your soul is in strength or struggle. It all determines by who you have decided to impress. Who do you want to be pleased with you on earth? If you notice when you come to the earth, the first thing that you encounter is a parent, which is an authoritative figure that you aim to please. The power of impressing someone on earth is that now you exercise the qualities of God within you. You have qualities of God within you. You have things that you're supposed to exercise in your character, your personality, your responses, your word selection, your attitudes. You notice that children, when they're underneath you as, your, as their parent, you get to see their attitudes when they're a child. You get to see how they respond to no. You're the first person that gets to witness that oftentimes because they are in a predicament where they have to exercise qualities of submission and respect and patience. And they're in a situation where they have to um, exert the right reaction to your authority. Now think about this. In this life, the reason why when you first come into the earth, you have a parent over you is because God wants you to be trained into submission. He wants you to be trained into how to act towards an instruction, how to act towards rules, how to act towards hedges, how to act towards um, expectations, how to act towards protocols, how to act towards uh, leadership. So saints, when you come into this world, you have a parent because that's God's desire that you be trained how to use your attitude. Now, saints, this is so deep. Everybody, and this is so deep. Everybody has the realm of attitude in their soul, but Satan intercepts that realm very early. So by the time you get to 20 and 30 and 15 and 14, you're operating in satanic attitudes. When really that attitude department was reserved by God for gladness. It was reserved by God for joy. It was reserved by God for patience. It was reserved by God for endurance and perseverance, having an attitude of determination, having an attitude of boldness, and so the thief will steal your attitude before the Holy Ghost could use it. And then most times you don't have somebody in your life that can even identify that Satan is using your attitude or even have the wisdom of God of how to fix it. See, when you was a little girl, who was prophetically watching you and discerning what you would become by the time you're 40? or by the time you're 30 or 60, who was prophetically watching you? Oftentimes, it's nobody. So, so by the time you get to a certain age, there's something that happens called stubbornness. And stubbornness means that I have done this for years and I have programmed myself that this is right. So let me keep this. And anybody that opposes this is the devil. When in all actuality, you're carrying a demonic attitude and mindset and thought life that God wants to get rid of. And the demons will trick you that it is people so that you never relinquish yourself and disconnect yourself from that demonic impartation. 
Your attitude bracket was reserved for God. He wanted to use it. Did you know that God created the emotions for him? So there is a system in your emotions where God speaks to you. Did you know that when you're carrying a heavy prophetic anointing, that God will speak to you in your emotional realm and even tell you when he's not happy? And it's not always about you. He'll tell you if he's not happy with somebody. He'll talk to you about somebody else and he'll transfer how he feels. If somebody talks to you and tells you something, he'll tell you, I don't like that they told you that. And you'll feel the voice of God in your emotions. God created the emotions for him. So saints, I want you to see this. In Genesis, when you see Eve getting aroused by that tree of knowledge of good and evil, you're seeing the beginning of the corruption to the attitude bracket. Her attitude was never supposed to get aroused by that. Her attitude was never supposed to expect to experience that. But her attitude is being corrupted by demonic powers. And so what you have to see with the born again lifestyle, God reprograms you and he takes the soul back into the correct programming so that he could register information into your emotions that's supposed to be there. Let me show you something. When Moses threw down the Ten Commandments, remember I did that at the conference. I gave you a display that I threw down the Bible. When Moses threw down the Ten Commandments, that was an emotional realm of God. That's why, that's why I was telling you at the conference. That's why God didn't check Moses and say, how dare thou? I'm gonna strike you down for tearing up my word. He, do you understand he broke the word? He broke what God spoke to him on a 40-day fast. He came down, God said, give this to the people. And when he came down, he threw it down. He broke the word of God right while God was watching him because God was doing it. Now, saints, what you're seeing is a display of the emotion of God. Now, this was very scary. And don't think for one minute that some of the children of Israel was looking at Moses like, look at this demonic man. How he gonna break the word of God? But what they didn't understand was they was breaking the word. When he broke the word, he was just showing them what they were doing to God. But you're seeing the emotional realm of God. The same way, when you see King Ahasuerus get angry at Haman, and remember, hung him on the gallows, and remember he had the men kill him, King Ahasuerus, the same one that promoted Haman, killed Haman on the same gallows that he wanted to hang all the children of Israel on. What you're seeing is the emotional realm of God being translated to King Ahasuerus. This is very powerful. This is very powerful. This is very powerful what I'm telling you. This is mighty what I'm telling you. King Ahasuerus was carrying the voice of God in his emotions. And so when Esther told him all those things, God penetrated his emotion with confirmation and he ended up hanging King Ahasuerus, uh, 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 ended up hanging Haman on the same thing. That's the emotional realm of God. That's the emotional realm of God. Now, there are some more softer emotional realms of God. Those, those were more hostile. But the softer emotional realms of God is where Jesus was at the tomb and then he wept. Remember when Lazarus died and he was in there for four days and remember when Jesus wept. You see, before he raised him from the dead, you're seeing the softer emotional realm of God. That realm is uh, the softer side, the, the broken hearted God. So these are all depictions of how God speaks in the emotions, all right? Then you also see how David was um, angry with Goliath. He was like, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? If you translate it, he was saying, who is this mother lover? You know, he was like, who is this MF? -er? That's the new test, that's the new translated version. That's what he was really saying. This pump, butter bean, popcorn looking nigga. 
That's what he was saying. You know, we say it different. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so when, when we when we see him talking like that, you know, it's it's different. You know, he said, "Who is this? I'm circumcised, circumcised Philistine." But how we would say it, like, "Who is this butter bean popcorn looking nigga?" See, that's how we do something different. But it was the same difference. Remember, back in the day, David wasn't saying, you know, that, you know. So, I mean, the vocabulary changed nowadays. Like, we say different stuff. You know, hog, head, look at popcorn, butter bean. You know, so that's what he was basically saying. But that was the emotional realm of God flowing through David. All right? And then you see... Um, also the emotional realm was flowing through, uh, uh, Isaac to recognize in Genesis 26 that the Philistines had blocked up the wells of his father. God used the emotional realm. God spoke his voice into the soul, into the attitude, into the emotions of Isaac to make him angry at the fact that he was losing to the altars of Satan because he didn't build an altar of sowing. And that's real deep, people of God. So when he got angry enough, he said, uh -uh, I'm not leaving this land. I'm going to sow my way out. I'm going to unstop these wells that the enemy thought that he was going to stop up. My dad had already accomplished his altar, and now the enemy want to make a laughing stock out of me, and I'm his son. I'm his promised son. So now you understand how even God used his voice in the emotional realm to talk to Isaac, to talk to Isaac. And Isaac became a sower off of what God had registered via his voice in the emotions of Isaac. 